Hello everyone, and uh, this is NLP Radio on air. Uh, we are greeting you again, me, our radio presenter Olga Sarkis here in the studio, and our usual guest Alexander Gerasimov. Hello, Alexander. Hello, Olga. Let me introduce you to our listeners. Uh, as we know, Alexander is uh, a best-known NLP trainer in Russia. Uh, negotiator, professional negotiator. His geography uh, of training and seminars held in over 70 cities in over 22, uh, 22 countries. So Alexander is here with us today and we are discussing a topic which is held and usually given at NLP Master course, which is re-imprinting. And this word sounds uh, real and familiar. Let us first of all uh, clear out actually what it means uh, re-imprinting, what is uh, imprint and what is to re-imprint. First of all, let's try to figure out the etymology. Alexander, would you explain? Re-imprinting re is a word that is formed from the prefix re and imprinting. In the last century was discovered a well, rather interesting and, on the other hand, terrifying fact that at the moment of the duckling birth, it must see the figure of his mother dog for the first seconds. If this doesn't happen, he continues to grow as a duckling who doesn't know what his mother looks like and cannot perceive her image. And as soon as the duckling was born, it began to show him the place of the mother. She showed him the balloon scheme and the duckling imprinted the image of the balloon as the image of the mother to follow this ball in the future to repeat the actions and Con Conrad Lawrence drew attention to this and noticed that such mechanisms exist in other animals, including, for example, a zebra, a zebra cub that is born, mom gets up in front of him and he literally absorbs this drawing so that he can then distinguish mom from the rest of the zebras. And it turns out that a person has the same affect. It may be less pronounced. Let's say our more conscious part can affect the imprinting process. Well, let's say you had such situations when the first experience was very significant for you. For example, it may be the first date, it may be the first money earned, it may be your first job, your first projects, and all this is the first. It turns out to be the most significant. I can give you a simple example, maybe not for our American listening audience, and yet, um, here we were brought up. I'm talking about our generation on the cartoons «Ну, погоди!» And for us, this cartoon is just an icon of style and just the limit of perfection. And when other cartoons appeared, we unconsciously, but also consciously, including their um, soldering out the tracks from the processor to other radio components, all cartoons with, well, Waited look a lot of time to reprint. Our writing, for example, Tom and Jerry cartoons and Disney classics, so that we don't understand that it turns out there is someone tastier than carrots, more interesting. Well, wait, and so on. The process of imprinting is the process of imprinting. The process of re-imprinting is a process of re-imprinting. Okay, Alexander, uh, first of all, give me a second, I will clarify for the listeners about uh, Nu Pogadi. Uh, it's a cartoon, it's a very famous in Russia cartoon, uh, with the two main heroes, personages of uh, a wolf and a hare, uh, where during the whole cartoon a wolf is chasing the hare and trying to catch it or probably eat it up, however, never manages to, he always fails. And uh, this is like a funny, funny story, series of stories where a wolf never manages to catch the hare and all the adventures they are going through. So such a very funny cartoon everyone knows uh, in Russia. Uh, as for Tom and Jerry, definitely ev everyone uh, is familiar with. Uh, as for imprint, um, Alexander, do I understand correctly that an imprint is kind of a stamp? 
It's a stamp in our mind. Да, это как раз как некая печать. Yes, this is just some kind of printing. Or if you take the electrotechnical term, that is a computer board on which tracks are literally soldered from the processor there, for example, to other radio parts. And in printing is just in a good way, probably burning out this track here, from which, well, literally, the electric train signal can't get anywhere. Yes, sometimes it happens spontaneously. You can have such a simple example. When you remember that some movies made a, a big impression on you, or a cartoon, or a place, or a book, after 10, 20, 30 years, you come back to it, to this book, movie, start reading and watching and realize that this is not what I remembered from childhood at all. What a primitive plot, or how primitive it is written, drawn, and such a kind of disappointment occurs. And at this moment, the brain begins to look for something else important. And such a kind of reprogramming, reprinting occurs. So an imprint is um, a stamp. Okay, always negative or not necessarily? It can be like a positive print of something useful to them. For example, our life is added. For example, the first successful experience or sales or communication or dating and the person receives such conditionally very resource and reinforcement and tries and wants to repeat it. For example, a father praised his son or a mother praised her daughter for good grades and academic performance in a particular subject, and the child wanting to gain access to this state, to recognition, will accumulate even more experience in this direction and perhaps in the future will become a musician, a tram driver, and so on. But there are also negative imprints. For example, on the contrary, when something didn't work out and a person determines for himself well, they lived rich. There is nothing to start. This topic is not mine, not mine. And the person refuses. And the imprint, in this case, doesn't necessarily have some kind of binding to age. Not necessarily three, five, seven, ten years. It can be twenty-five. 40 years and so on. Uh, so, since we are discussing re-imprinting, uh, it's presupposed that we will be paying attention to a negative, a negative variant, uh, where we need to, as far as I understand, uh, change it and live it once again uh, in a different way. So, uh, even for those who have already heard the idea of an imprint, right now Alexander has explained just perfectly fine the whole idea of an imprint. And now let's move on to the technique. What is actually technique for? What is the idea of this uh, technique? In very simple words, the idea of this technique is to take the unpleasant. We work with an unpleasant event of the past and revise it, rebuild, change your attitude to this situation. Moreover, the more intense the events or the earlier event occur, the better. If you pay attention to your whole life, retrospectively rewinding the past, maybe some of you are already noticing, maybe now you will begin to notice that some events in our lives are repeated again and again. Let's assume similar unhappy relationships or loss of money or spoiled some things or situation lives. And if there is a certain repeatable, a certain template, then the template at the beginning had this initial stencil. The task is to find him and change the attitude towards him, because it was this case that most likely influenced you. Well, since the process of imprinting itself usually occurs in a very early childhood, then most likely this experience occurred in childhood. Uh -huh. how, to, how to actually figure out this pattern? You've just mentioned the pattern, so how to uh, find the pattern? Just using a meta frame or are there any like series of actions to get to this pattern? 
если человек достаточно осознан, So every time he says and again and once again it happened. So paying a special attention to that. Mm -hmm, got it? Okay. So so let's let's imagine, let's assume that we have uh, noticed the pattern, that we figured it out. So what to do next with it? The next step is to remember this event, immerse yourself in it, most likely it is an unpleasant, maybe it will be accompanied by some tears, a deterioration in mood, a directly depression, it is okay, and often it will be accompanied by just some phrase of conviction, which carries, say, the concentrate of this whole experience. That is, for example, a person's parents took money for him or once again abandoned him in a relationship. He found the very first experience and in the end he makes some kind of conclusion. Well, for example, it can be, it's useless to save up, they'll take it anyway. Or relationships are always a pain. And here is the task, having reached this memory, to pull out of yourself these beliefs, well, or from the client. After this event has been found, this belief has been found. Then it makes sense to distance yourself as a prerequisite, that is, um, to get out of the situation and look at the situation from the other side, so as not to experience any sensations at all, because if this is not done, then the technique will go wrong. Mm -hmm. Alexander, is it actually possible to do the technique to your own self? Is it effective to be doing the technique to your own self? Maybe to record your voice? on a device and then to switch it on or it's just there is no, no way doing it yourself you are always going to need an operator it is not recommended to do this technique yourself rather not even out of consideration that you will do wrong or at some point it just happens that it is very difficult for a person it is difficult for an ordinary person to control himself in terms of emotions and experiences it may so happen that when you go to this imprint stop thinking about it and suddenly for some reason you think that oh if I had 30 years ago, or, and if I had this, and so on, and etc., then you can easily go into depression. If there is no dissociation skill, then it may not be psychologically very comfortable. It is better for someone to do this technique for you, moreover, this technique will quickly become a habit of thinking. If you do three, five times to yourself or someone, then you will already have these steps more precisely. It is easy to repeat and the technique will be made easier. Do you mean that re-imprinting re technique or dissociation? What should be a skill? Dissociation or the full technique? Um, both. We can say that re-imprinting itself as a technique is better to do with a instructor and dissociation. Here you need to do dissociations very well and a lot to understand the criteria that you really perceive this traumatic situation without emotions. From what I understand is because we start doing the re-imprinting, we first need to learn to dissociate very well. Otherwise, there is no way. Am I right? Yes, dissociation is a part of the re-imprinting technique and you should understand how to do it properly. 
So you should be already skilled in dissociation before you start. Right, let's move on. What's the next step? The next step is to get used to the role of each participant of the imprint and find out the positive intentions of this person. This is also a rather unusual strategy of thinking when, for example, some person who has hurt you in the past, well, you are looking for positive intentions from him. And actually this situation is therefore unpleasant because you perceive it as clearly negative and even try to assume, to think, to imagine that the person who is hurting you wants something good is quite difficult. And in this step, our task is to get used to the role of everyone who is present. And it is important to get used to, let's say, from the less significant to you. We get used to the more significant then a little more significant, and so on and so on to ourselves. And we find out their positive intentions, what a person wants. There is also such a detail, if, for example, this is some kind of school situation, there is a group of your friends, classmates, then you can perceive them as one person, not immediately. You can't mention everyone at the least there if they didn't stand out much, were identified separately, then you can take all of them in general. If we have members uh, who are animate, but not humans, for example, animals. For instance, I had a case uh, which is still an imprinted negative experience for me, definitely, when my dog, very small, uh, was uh, beaten, bitterly beaten, it was a cr crazy situation when I almost lost my dog because a huge dog almost has eaten up mine and it was a cr crazy, terrible story and I feel my fault that I'm guilty in that. So if I try to get involved into that event, should I try to touch upon every member, including dogs in this situation? In this case, we understand that in any example, let's say, this is a projective test. We are not able to understand what the dog, cat, no matter who else, really felt. These are often some kind of projective tests. Animals act on an instinctive level, and therefore, let's say there are only basic needs and positive intentions based on basic needs. Here I would rather pay attention, here in this situation, to the owner of some other pets or observers who didn't interfere but could and, and so on. That is, that is what I mean. Here, how could you pay attention to animals and to a bench and to a tree? Of course, but remember that this is a projective test. Okay. Right, so get involved uh, into each member and f from less importance, from the least importance to the greatest importance and try to uh, clarify what was the positive intention. Right, uh -huh. what's the next one? The next step is to go back to the observer position and start adding resources to each of the participants in the imprint, imprinting the process. We add implemented positive intentions. It turns out that the person gets what he wanted, closes his argument and ceases to be perceived as negative by us. If we too also starting from the most insignificant to ourselves. It turns out that everyone in this situation got what they wanted, got their own resource. The first question. In order to get back to the position of an observer, should we again dissociate? Is it the same step to dissociate once again? And the, the second point, um, adding up resources to uh, the other members. Are we doing it for us, for ourselves, to start feeling not so bad, or are we doing it for them 
to kind of uh, add up some positivity to the energy of the situation? What's the idea of adding up resources to, to those people? Well, let's say there are several benefits here. First, of course, we help a person complete this process because an imprint is an incomplete process and it turns out that, let's say, that a person wanted to get up from a chair but at the same time remained bent. All the muscles are toned. And psychologically, it turns out that we help a person to complete this situation. I mean, instead of constantly, unconsciously thinking about it and trying to complete it. For example, in the case of a dog, to protect someone, to save someone. For example, there is no longer this situation, but the person continues to look for some, for someone whom he can save from the terrible, something terrible. For example, playing the role of a rescuer. It turns out that this gestalt, or argument, as we call it, is closed. And the person is psychologically liberated very much. Moreover, since imprinting, importing is a psychologically very strong situation, then the release of energy is simply unrealistically colossal. A person happens to even reconsider his whole life and all his situations. Moreover, the technique of re-imprinting itself, it is not only in NLP, it is also in Gestalt and in positive psychology and even in Castaneda called recapitulation. And therefore, or there are some esoteric explanations why this technique works. That's a very interesting point, because I'm, I'm convinced that a lot of, a great deal of our audience uh, has something uh, in common with esoterics, so it would be interesting. What are those points? Yes, here is the very process of transferring a resource, the completion of these intentions of each person, even from the outside, looks very strange and a little so esoteric. I mean, a person stands in one place, makes some movements into space, then he puts on this space, accept this energy or says some words, plunges into some sensations, and it turns out to be like a theater of one actor. I mean, a person standing on the stage plays all the roles of all the participants in this scene. Thus, by acting out all these parts of the personality inside himself, and to some extent of a completing all the processes, a person becomes really free. It's important here uh, to note that one and the same person plays each role simultaneously, right? So we don't need to place, for instance, three assistants, like in Hellinger. We, we don't need to do that. So one and the same personality plays the role of a giver, the role of the recipient, and the role of the observer. It's all one who has lived through this imprinted experience, right? Yes, that's right. That's just, say, Hollinger is when you have too many people around and you decide to do re-imprinting, mm -hmm. so to say. How much time does it need uh, to do, for instance, this step, or like every step? This can be a very large step of time, for example, half an hour, maybe an hour, if a person is particularly very emotional about, emotional about this experience or a lot of participants, or it happens that I seem to have added resources, I began to return to my place, but it feels like something is missing, as if I haven't finished, haven't finished, and again, again, and again, it can take an hour and a half. I mean, it's such a very exhausting energy, sometimes even work. Because every time getting into the place of some other person and plunging into his emotions, well, it's quite nerve-wracking work. 
достаточно нервная работа. Окей, uh, okay. uh, just for our listeners, one little remark that very soon we're going on uh, another training by Alexander to uh, Dominican Republic. I don't know when you're going to listen to that, but anyway, very soon, like in a month or two, we're going to be there and um, I will definitely participate in uh, carrying out this technique. So I am now very interested in every detail how to do that right. Uh, okay, uh, are, there, um, are there any more steps we're having left? Because, like, I've got questions, so... Yes, there is literally just a little bit left. This is the main work, and when we have lived through this whole thing, we have passed through ourselves, and after this situation has been filled with resource, it is important to leave it already in a new status, a new state. A person living it mentally or metaphorically going forward, you can even notice it. A person's um, physiology changes completely, and he becomes very often to some completely different conclusion. That's it. The beliefs that we first found out, it is better to hide money or relationships cause pain. A person will name a completely different belief. Moral with this belief very often will be such a new rule of his life and he or she will enjoy it. And of course, it will be accompanied by such a very physiological relaxation, pleasure, and such a feeling of deep satisfaction. Alexander, you have definitely done this like hundreds of times in your life, so you have watched people. Uh, do they really demonstrate such a global change in, let's say, one hour? Uh, so sorry for such a skeptical ideas, but still. The full technique occupies like, let's say, half an hour till hour. Is it really possible to observe such a global change in a person's perception in like such a small time? Well, such changes in a person's life can be much faster, not necessarily from this technique. Maybe you are even familiar with this situation. You've heard some phrase after which everything inside changes. You realize that life will develop in a completely different way. This technique is just a more regulated, let's say, the process of obtaining this state, and indeed, let's say, I can translate some kind of approximate situation about, well, there's a girl who constantly thought that everyone was thinking about her. She had this here. I want to give an example about a girl who thought all the time that everyone was thinking about her. What was her surprise when she got into place? In my opinion, it was not so much in the spotlight of the circle of friends. And it was really such a relaxation and broad and amazing affect. Or another example about a girl who, let's say, was left alone with her younger sister, didn't keep track of her as a child, she hurt herself, and she felt guilty about her younger sister all her life and constantly helped her through life. Took care of her and after this technique she realized how she didn't let her sister grow up, overcome troubles, and it changed her very much, and the relationship with her sister reached a completely different level. That's it. It may be because of this technique or just even an accidentally dropped word will have such an effect. Mm -hmm. Whose word? You said a word. Whose word? The operator's word? So does the operator somehow influence that person, or all conclusions uh, are done by himself only. This is often the conclusion of the person himself. That's it. He makes this technique and then these words are said by the person to himself. After he does this technique, he walks for a while, stays alone with himself, reassembles his experience, and as a result of this reassembly, new thoughts are born, which he voices, which begin to sound like a new conviction. Alexander, what is the ideal operator? Does he have to ask questions all the time, like, 
Are there any conclusions you would like to make? Or maybe is it something you have just realized after you've done that? So, or the best idea is just to keep silent and to watch the person's state. What is the best role of the operator here? Uh, the best behavior. Uh, best of all, let's say, the best role of the observer, of the one who conducts this technique, is to record the steps of the technique and doesn't allow a person to immerse himself in the state, to track these minute moments of change, to fix some words of a person, because it happens to be important. Let's say the moment of enumeration of certain resources, and when the technique is done, it may so happen that a person has changed, but he himself didn't notice this change. Sometimes there is such a neat indicator that the technique the so-called ratification, confirmation that the technique is being done correctly and everything is going well. Such a kind of support group. Okay, so uh, let's probably finish up with the points, first of all, before, before my uh, specifications. Any more points we have? Mm -hmm. Well, actually the last point, the so-called environmental check, is to imagine a situation. Let's say if it was some kind of unpleasant memory, then ask to remember the situation again, or it was um, some kind of unpleasant attitude to a particular person and remember this person. Or let's say a similar situation, relationships with parents, with bosses, with some specific person, and we remember, together with the person, look and notice that he has a completely different behavior after the memory. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably haven't said, or maybe I mis misheard it, about the step of uh, getting him back uh, after, we, after we pushed him a little bit to getting involved, he's involved deeply, and we need to pull him out from that. It's a very important step, isn't it? Yes, we do this with our dissociation technique. Every time we immerse ourselves in the role of a person, we necessarily leave this observer position a dissociated position. Do we need to get him dissociated before this final check again? Here? Yes, it can be done, but usually after a person passes some time and comes to a completely new conclusion, he will already look completely different, almost mm -hmm. physically different. So he naturally comes uh, after that step. Okay, right. So what I have also noticed is that skill of second position is also highly important. and. The conclusion I will make is that there is no sense in doing that re-imprinting technique unless you are at least maybe few times an NLP practitioner, am I right? Because if you're not an NLP practitioner, if you've got no skills of dissociations, getting into the second position and other other skills, there is no, no, no point in trying to, to do the technique. Elsewise it will be fiasco, nothing will work. Or am I maybe too categoric about that? Yes, I absolutely agree that this technique is quite so strong, powerful, and some steps are critically important here. To possess, for example, the skills of dissociation. Probably this is the key from my point of view in this technique, that it is better not to do this technique. Ideally, of course, it should be done to you by not a new master, a good deep specialist. Or, at first, you should practice well, very separately in steps. Then this technique will have a truly miraculous effect. Thank you so much, Alexander. Another, another great point adding up to our knowledge. I am sure that the most curious listeners will even try to make a little conspect and even try to practice it. 
So off you go. Um, as you are done, you're very welcome with your commentaries, please. So put down below your commentaries, maybe your insights or results. Also likes and reposts are always welcome. And see you in the next podcast. Bye. Bye-bye.